Are you ready to learn about how you can build awesome automation for your users with just a few clicks? My name is Leanne Rimmel and this is Expert Corner, where I sit down with Salesforce product experts to talk about things that matter for you, Salesforce admins. Before we get started, here's our forward-looking statement. Please make all purchasing decisions based on currently available technologies. Today, we're gonna to sit down with Adam White, product manager for Flow. Adam's been hard at work building cool features into Flow screens to make it easier for you, our Salesforce admins, to surface automation for your end users. Let's go meet Adam. Hi, Adam. Thank you so much for joining us today on Expert Corner. Thank you for having me. So I'm really excited for us to jump in and to talk about screen flows and how admins can be building the screen flows. But first, you know, I know some of our admins might not have met you before or seen you on previous release videos. So I think this is a great opportunity for you to introduce yourself to our admin community a little bit. Can you tell us a little more about your background in the Salesforce ecosystem and what brought you to Salesforce? Yeah, sure. So um, I myself am a former admin, former consultant turned architect turned uh, now product manager. So I've gone through my paces, been a customer, a partner, and it, you know, uh, at one point got beamed up to the mothership known as Salesforce. So I started out uh, as an accidental admin myself. I was actually doing, um, you know, Jira administration before. So I was really into, you know, IT systems. And then our, uh, our uh, the company I used to work for, the operations VP, reached out to me and said, "Hey, we'd love for you to, you know, inherit our Salesforce instance and take it over, and you know." really drive it uh, to the value that it needs to get to. And so that's when I fell in love with Salesforce. Uh, a year later, I got my admin cert uh, and then kind of spread my wings and moved from DC to, to Richmond, Virginia and joined a consultancy down here in Richmond and continued my, my love for Salesforce. And that's kind of when I uh, got really involved with like the flow world and flow community and just really fell in love with flow. And this was, you know, before the days of our shiny flow builder is what we have now. So uh, it was even powerful back then. And uh, at that point, um, I got really into contributing to the flow community uh, through uh, involvement with unofficial SF and the Trailblazer community. And there's even like Discord servers involved in helping people build flows and got super into it. And then the pandemic hit. And that opened up the door for uh, many people to join Salesforce that you know weren't based in San Francisco. And then uh, the travel requirements changed. And I was like, oh, well, now that I don't have to travel, I'd love to join Salesforce and join our professional services group. So um, about a year, eh, about three, six months into the pandemic, I joined our professional services group as an architect. And uh, about nine months to 12 months after that, uh, Alex Edelstein, uh, who many of, you may, many of you may know already, uh, one of our VPs on, in, on the flow side, uh, said there was an opening in the in the flow uh, product management team where uh, he said, you know, it'd be great if you could apply and interview and, and see if it's a right fit. And um, lo and behold, long story short, here I am on the flow team, a former and current flow natic, uh, building the next generation of screen flows. I love your story. So thank you for sharing that, Adam. I love your story because you really have been through all of the phases and all of the various kind of growth stages of being a Salesforce admin, uh, both being an accidental admin and kind of getting uh, thrust into the role and having to sort out, you know, how to use automation, how to bring it to your organization, and then paying it forward with sharing your knowledge, answering questions, and really continuing to pay it forward. You know, I know that you still um, look really actively at what the community is asking for with Flow and are, are working on those tools and helping deliver things that the community really needs. So thank you. We are, I know you said you, you, what yeah. was it, you have beamed up to the mothership. <laughs> We're yeah. glad to have you. Yeah. And, you know, I try to keep my ears to the ground because, you know, I'm not building flows for customers directly anymore. So I try to like look for questions and you know, as a product manager, it's important for me to understand what the problems uh, are that people are trying to solve for and automate. So it's really important for me to not only keep my flow skills up to par, but also to understand, you know, the people's pain points and what exactly people are trying to automate so that, you know, we can try and fit that into our future roadmap. Absolutely. 
Well, and, you know, given, especially given your background, I think this is going to be a really interesting time to talk about screen flows and talk about what's coming with screen flows and, and what's been delivered um, and how admins should be using them. But I want to really start from the beginning for our admins, because we might have people who are on this video who haven't built a screen flow yet, or maybe they're exploring yeah. flow and not sure where it fits for them. So let's kind of start from the beginning from an admin perspective. Um, what are screen flows for admins and, and why are they so important for admins? Yeah, great question. So it's important to remember there are three different types of uh, flows that people are traditionally used to. Um, there are screen flows, record trigger flows, and then there's also a third type, what are called auto launch flows. So I won't really cover that too much, but in terms of screen flows, like for me, it's all about automation and making things easier for end users. So uh, the demo I'll, we'll show in just a moment is all about preventing users from jumping around record pages and missing fields and setting up different records in, in let's say an onboarding process or a contact creation process, accounts, cases, anything that requires specific steps to be done, screen flows are a perfect fit for that. So if you're afraid of someone not going in and creating, let's say, or filling in a case team, for example, after they create a case, a screen flow is a perfect thing to do that for. Or if they have to go and relate the, a new contact to multiple accounts, because that person might actually be related to multiple accounts, a screen flow is a perfect way to do that. It's all about saving people time so that they can go about their day and perform their real jobs. Absolutely. I some of my favorite screenflow use cases that I see a lot of admins when they're first kind of dipping their toe into screenflows are exactly what you mentioned. It's trying to enforce and encourage that good user behavior. Um, mm -hmm. So whether that is kind of some coaching and encouragement to make sure users are entering data in the right place. Um, if there's, you know, if you've got something where you want people to enter call notes a certain way or enter case team a certain way and as an admin, you know, one of the things that we should always be thinking about is that usability piece and adoption and making sure the tool is being used the right way and managing that data quality. And I love when I see admins using screen flows for that, because that's often kind of that first entry into screen flows, because um, most admins can look at their users' click path and, and how they're using a page and find an opportunity to remove some clicks, or maybe if there's a bunch of data entry in a certain way, maybe put it all into a screen flow and have a little more coaching in there. Um, so it's really yep. useful. Exactly. Yep. So what are some, I know that there's been a ton of great flow features the last few releases, and this is a really exciting time for Flow Builder. Um, you know, you mentioned kind of the before days of Flow Builder. So if you're newer yeah. to Flow, flow Builder as an audience member, um, we are really continuing to invest in Flow Builder. There's so many cool features available. And one of the reasons we're here today is to specifically talk about some of those screen flow features and some of the things that, that you've been working on, Adam, for, for admins in screen flow. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, sure. So like you said, it's an exciting time for flow. And I think of all the, the products at Salesforce flow, you know, we really deliver the goods every every release, and it's always really exciting to to be able to reveal those every release. Um, so, at least in terms of screen flows, it's really important to stay on top of of release notes because at the end of the day, how you implement something and what you're trying to automate could change release to release because we might release a new feature that might make something you know really sing for your users or it might really speed things up. And in this most recent release. A prime example, and I think one of the things that make that is making everyone super excited is like the release of our data table component. Uh, before this release, there wasn't a fantastic way of embedding like what's for most people will recognize list views, right? A data table is more or less a list view within your flow. So it'll allow your users to select from a list of records and be able to present more than just one field um, to represent those records. And the use cases are just so vast, you couldn't possibly pick one. We'll see one in the demo in a moment, but it's data table really just takes screen flows to a next to the next level. And you know, there are a few other lots of little features here and there that are quite going to be quite popular with users. Um, and the, the other thing I also want to call out is like every feature is so different depending on what, what your background is and what your skill level is, because we have features 
for beginners and we have features for advanced users. And sometimes you get nice uh, meet in the middle features, but um, it, it really just depends on like who you're talking to. But in my opinion, like one of the most impactful things coming to screen flows is a uh, data table, which I'm excited to show. Awesome. Well, I, I do know, you know, we just got back from Dreamforce 22 and both you and Jennifer Lee presented data tables in uh, keynote rooms, and there was a lot of enthusiasm from all the Flownatics. And so I know that there's is a highly requested feature, and I know um, people are really excited to see it. And I think probably our YouTube audience is really excited to see it too. Do you think you could yeah. show us a demo of some of these screen flow sure. features? Yeah, if you watch the release readiness session uh, from from Dreamforce, you'll you'll notice that Diana does call out the fact that I was quite vocal about uh, making this a native component in Flow. So I'm so so happy that we we were able to make that happen for everyone. So yeah, let's dive in. All right, so uh, we're going to hop into Flow Builder here. So this is actually the same demo that I showed at Dreamforce. We'll just uh, hop into a few other you know, smaller details so that folks can understand a little bit more about how the Flow is built. You'll also know I want to package this and get this up on uh, the lab, Salesforce Labs. So you'll have a chance to play around with it yourself uh, whenever that's uh, up and published. So for those that have not had the experience of building screen flows, you'll feel right at home if you've built record trigger flows. Uh, the Really the biggest difference is the, the fact that you can actually add screens within your flow. Uh, and so what actually I'll do is I'll open up a screen and give you a brief tour and show you all, show you all some of the new stuff coming in winter and sprinkle in a few of the other uh, features from the past couple of releases too. So we're gonna hop into our first screen here. And real quick, one thing I just want to call out, and this is actually kind of like a fundamental flow concept, but the pink elements and the orange elements, the biggest difference is that pink elements are actually going and updating and manipulating the Salesforce data. And how I like to think about the orange elements are that these are specific to your flow. You're not actually updating or deleting or creating anything in your system yet. You actually have to do that with those pink elements. So if you see orange and pink, that's how I like to think about those two things. So we're going to open up a, our very first screen here in our flow. And you'll notice um, in our new release, we've actually doubled the screen editor size. I've actually had it. Uh, found it hard to go back to the old release because of how sm how much smaller it was. And so this new screen editor size has been uh, quite a blessing when I'm doing demos too. So, so um, just to give you a quick little tour here on the left. A lot of you will be familiar with the components. So these are basically things like text. This is our new data table component. Uh, internally, we call them unbounded components because they're not tied to your uh, your record data or your objects in any way. This fields tab is traditionally what we call in um, the marketing term for it is dynamic forms for flow. You'll also hear the term record fields in our documentation. This is actually how you go in and drag specific fields from an object. Um, and so there's lots of little lingo that is specific to flow, like variables, but it is, we did make it slightly easier to, to set these up in winter. So if you click new resource, this is actually where all your data is stored when a user is actually making changes on their screen. So in this case, I'll get out of here. I store all the details that's being entered about a contact in this new contact variable using dynamic forms for flow. So I can just drag over all the supported field types uh, directly over. Now we don't support all the field types and data types yet on an object. We're slowly making our way um, and to make sure all of them are supported, but we do have a list in our documentation of what's supported. So um, one of the biggest features um, is record type filtering. So historically, one of the things that I also hammered on upon joining the team was it is really hard to filter pick lists by record type in, in screen flows. And so traditionally, fields, record fields are tied to metadata. So we thought that the most logical place to do this record type filtering was in record fields. So now whenever your record resource has an actual record type ID, it'll now just be filtered by, um, by record type. So no extra steps needed. So that's probably top three, one of the bigger features coming to screen flows in winter. Um, 
a, a feature we released last time was section headers. So you can actually name your sections and you can have multiple columns in your sections, uh, kind of similar to what page layouts can do. Um, so you can kind of create an experience that resembles large, in large part a, uh, a record creation process that people are used to. Uh, conditional field visibility is another thing that is quite used uh, often in screen flows. So you'll notice in, in my demo that I'll show off here is whenever someone checks this box, I then expose this entirely new section that's going to let this person expose a, um, going to let this person relate multiple accounts to this contact in our creation flow. So lots of little things here, all in one little place, but powerful nonetheless. So I know we talked about data table and it being probably one of my favorite features in Winter. So I'll just show it off real quick if, if folks want to see it. So there's a step in our creation process when we're creating a contact where we actually want to re relate that contact to some opportunities in the form of a what's called an opportunity role. And historically, it's actually rather, you know, it can be challenging to get to it when you're actually creating that contact. So we actually built in this case a screen flow to do it. And so what we wanted to do was we wanted to show a table of opportunities related to those accounts that we picked in our very first screen. So this is our data table component right here. So we spent a qu quite a bit of time here on the right-hand side on our property editor. And we take pride in how easy it is to set up. So we've got, if, just to give you a quick little tour, uh, you know, every component has to have an API name just like fields do. Uh, you, we have a label here and you can choose to have a label, that label show up uh, on your actual table. So your source collection, this is just your data that you're going to be showing in your screen. So uh, for those that are newer to, to screen flows, this is the actual um, data that you're passing in. Typically, you're using things like a get records. Um, and after you do that, This is where you select your row selection mode. So uh, based on my experience in the consulting world, I had found there are a lot of scenarios where you wanna actually change um, you know, whether or not it's a radio button or a checkbox, or you may not want to anyone to select anything at all. So you actually have uh, your choice to, to select one or multiple or no records. And you might need to select two records or 10. We also support a selection range. And suppose you wanted to have records automatically selected when you wanted to enter your screen, that's supported too. And then you can easily add your fields here. So here I have some formula fields that um, create hyperlinks. You can do images, which is super cool. Um, here, I just have something very basic. And you can also override the names too. So if one scenario that I came across as well, Sometimes you're creating a table of cases, for example, in a community page. Well, you may not have customer friendly names for your fields and you might need to actually change the label for those fields, but you don't wanna change the actual fields themselves. So we allow you to override it here in the table. And we actually have a rich feature plan for data table. And I'm really excited uh, to take this, help take this thing across the finish line next release. And one of the really cool things about this is you can test it quite easily with our debug running. And I know the word debug sounds kind of scary, but it's actually quite intuitive. So if you all you need to do is hit debug. And then what it'll ask you for is anything that you have set as an input into your flow, you have the opportunity to put that in here. So in my case, I'm putting in the record ID of wherever this is running. And then you can run through it as a user, and then you can get details about what's happening in your flow. So if it's not behaving as you would expect, you'll get all that data on the right-hand side. So now that we've tested it and debugged it, we can actually then go and embed it in a quick action pretty easily. So here I've, I've already done that, and we can essentially, it's as easy as clicking your quick action. It'll pop up in a nice modal. And you'll notice here on the left, I've only included maybe you know six, seven different fields using dynamic forms for flow versus the 30 or 40 fields that someone might be inundated with in a page layout. And what I've also done is you're able to create 
uh, choices here on the right using either picklist data or records, uh, just using any object in Salesforce. So here I've got account data or account role data so that you've got contact data here on the left and then role data on the right, which you know people have been asking for years to have uh, you know, multiple objects represented in a single page. And Flow has been able to do that for a long time. And this is one of the ways that Flow really shines is making things super simple for end users. So they don't need to understand the complexities that have, the, excuse me, the complexities of the data model. You can just make it super simple for them in a nice, clean, like guided experience. Adam, this is awesome. This is so useful. Um, you know, I think screen flows i know for me screen flows were the first way that i started building flows so mm -hmm. for admins out there if you haven't started building flows yet like screen flows can be such a great entrance into flows because yeah. almost every single one of us could sit down with users and find areas where maybe they are having to navigate around the page to make different updates or maybe they're updating related records or we want them to update related records um yeah. Or maybe there's an opportunity for some coaching and guidance to make it easier for users to make updates or to receive information. So yeah, yeah I think I, I love screen flows. They were the first, first kinds of flows that I started building um, myself. And so this is really useful. I appreciate you showing us this. And these new updates are really exciting. Yeah. And you know, you might start out doing one thing with an automation, and then the users will just have suddenly have new ideas of other things to automate. And it just creates a really nice engagement between you know the admin team and the end users, and it's 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 just awesome. Um, so you know these are tons of new features. It's really exciting. We've talked about how there's so many um, release items for Flow this past release and previous release, and you know why staying up to date on release is so important. So can you talk a little bit about ways for admins to really stay ahead of these Flow updates and? Yeah. And maybe some of the ways for them to communicate and work with you on sharing things they'd like to see or things they would expect to see or, or would like to try to get on the list um, for yeah. this flow update roadmap. Yeah, sure. So, I, you know, I, I'd be a terrible PM if I didn't say go to the ID exchange and submit your ideas. Um, I will say I have used a lot of the people, a lot of the things that people said, for example, in the in operator ID exchange post. I had 17,000 ID exchange points when we retired at this release. I actually used a lot of quotes that people used in their post on that to other PMs and other people on the team to help people understand, you know, why is it that you want this feature? Uh, what's your use case? It's really valuable for product um, to be able to see like the backgrounds, the why people are asking for these things. Um, so you might feel like, you know, it's going off into the ether, but we do read them and it's really, uh, really helpful. So stay on top of the ID exchange if you like want to submit features. Um, as far as staying on top of new feature, ob features, obviously our release notes are really good. Uh, you know, you all and the admin relations team do a fantastic job on your admins blog of making sure people understand the new flow features coming. Um, and even just the trailblazer groups, there's lots of MVPs that are blogging constantly about new features and, and LinkedIn is a great way to stay connected. People are talking about, um, all the different use cases that they're going to now be able to do with all these new flow features. So it's, it's all about just staying connected with people and, you know, user groups are another fantastic way, uh, you know, your local user, local user group. Uh, staying on top of things. So those are really good ways of, of staying connected. Um, and of course, some of us are on Twitter and LinkedIn, and uh, there's even a Discord and Slack server for Salesforce, which a lot of us are are on top of as well. So, yeah. That's great. I think, um, and I so appreciate, you know, people like you and, you know, Jennifer Lee and many members of the community who do share so many blogs or who are now members of Salesforce, but who, you know, we're sharing so many blogs and so many answers and things like that. So don't worry if you're listening and you're not sure where those things are, all of those, um, we'll make sure to include all of those in the show notes so you can access um, those groups and things like that, that Adam is talking about. Um, Cause I would, you know, definitely plus one to all of that. Um, it's also very often another person has encountered the same obstacle that you're encountering. So going to the Trailblazer community, going to answers, 
like going to those places, it's, it's often someone else has encountered that and maybe has a fix, or you can search and see that someone else has already asked a similar question and maybe someone answered that for them already. Um, okay. So we've talked a lot about screen flows and why they're so important and why they're so impactful. Um, I loved hearing your story to joining Salesforce and why it's so important to you to build uh, these features for admins. So we probably have audience members who are, you know, getting ready there to get started with flow. They're excited for flow. They want to build automation. What is your number one, you know, piece of advice for admins, wherever they are really on their, their flow journey or their screen flow journey, um, but especially those who are getting started? Yeah, great, great question. So this is actually kind of related to what you just said. So everyone, as if you're getting started, everyone has had the same challenges that you're having with getting started with any new product, any new tool. So the, you know, the first thing I can say is don't get discouraged. Nobody starts as an expert. Gosh, I remember my very first flow before the new flow designer days. I think it was a two element flow. And in and, and my day, you couldn't actually <laughs> trigger flows from a record trigger. Uh, you actually had to trigger it from a process, which then triggered a flow. So um, I remember it was, very, it was a very simple flow. I couldn't figure it out. Um, it was something to the effect of like creating a task and using the, the ID from the task created back onto another task. Anyway, memory's hazy. This was about five <laughs> years ago. But my point is you start small, you crawl, walk, run, and then you're doing marathons and you could do it blindfolded. Like it, it really is a journey. Don't get discouraged. Um, Google is your friend. Trailblazer Group is your friend. Uh, just like any other admin skill in Salesforce, Flow is no different. Um, utilize your network if you have one. There's lots of support um, uh, support networks like Trailblazer Community, like Slack, uh, the Ohana Slack, and Salesforce Exchange Discord server. Those are two great sources. And then you know, even if you're at a bigger company or uh, you know solo, it's there's so many different ways you can get help. Um, we have a very vibrant community on, on the the Trailblazer group to help you out. So don't get discouraged. It's not just you. Um, everyone goes through their learning cycles differently. Just it is so rewarding at the end. I promise you'll get addicted at some point or another. Um, just I think the biggest reward that you'll get is the faces on your end users when they tell you that, hey, uh, that new wizard that you built for me saved me four or five hours of my week. And I got to go home to my kids and have dinner with them because I wasn't entering data manually all day, right? Like those are the stories that are going to keep keep you going, I think, with your with your flow journey. And they kept me going at least. And, and I think that's so meaningful, right? Like when you're building these automations, you're able to actually change how people feel when they're engaging with the product that you work on. Yeah. And I guess the other the other piece of advice I would give from a technical slash non-technical perspective is it requires no technical skill to document what you're doing. Um, one little thing that I used to do when I was an admin is we had a ticket tracker or an issue tracker. And whenever I would build a flow, I would put in like a ticket ID or a, like a tracker ID in the description so that, you know, whenever I left or a future me came back to my flow, I could reference that and understand like the background and the context for the changes made. So documentation is quote unquote free. It's it helps future you and others in understanding, you know, why an automation was built. Absolutely. Yes. Please do documentation, everyone yes. who's on this, whether <laughs> you're a new admin or a tenured admin. Well, awesome. That's such great advice. It's so meaningful. Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. I love the demo. I'm so excited for ScreenFlow and especially for the future of ScreenFlow. Thank you. You're welcome. That was awesome. I'm so excited for you to get hands on with building awesome ScreenFlows for your end users. ScreenFlows are one of the best ways to get started with using Flow Builder and start to experiment with some of those automation tools. I especially love the new data table component that Adam shared in his demo. All of the links and groups that we mentioned can be found in the show notes for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a video like this and visit us at admin.salesforce.com where we have tons of blogs and videos and podcasts, especially for you, our Salesforce admins. That's all for today and I will see you on the next Expert Corner.